What's up everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to set up your 8BitDo gamepad controllers with your RetroPie system. These are great controllers. I think personally that they're the best Bluetooth controllers that you can get for your RetroPie system. The only thing that's bad about these is they really don't mention anything about the Raspberry Pi except for on the back of the box. It says what they're compatible with. You have the Switch, Windows, Mac OS, Steam, Android, and Raspberry Pi. This right here is the only mention of Raspberry Pi though. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually demonstrate with this SF30 Pro Bluetooth controller gamepad. Um, this is one of the best ones that I've found on there just because it has the retro feel, but you also have the two um, joysticks as well. So it kind of upgrades um, the retro feel of a Super Nintendo controller, but now you can also use these to play um, PlayStation, N64, and the Dreamcast games on the RetroPie not just the um, old school Nintendo and Sega games. Um, so first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and just show you what each of these game pads includes. Right. So we have our controller here. You can see these game pads, I mean the um, joysticks rather, that are really nicely made. Push in, you got pretty much all the features you would have on a PlayStation built into this smaller one. You have your um, shoulder sticks here you have your triggers um, start select pretty much everything you would need these are also nice too this is actually a favor shortcut button and this we actually programmed to go back and we can make this into our hotkey which is nice so we're not using the um, start and select we'd actually use this button and the start um, also what's included is this manual here which actually does absolutely nothing for us if we're setting this up with the raspberry pi there is, um, it doesn't matter which version you get here. Let's go to the English section. It mentions Switch instructions, Android, Windows, and Mac OS instructions here, but there is never any mention anywhere in here of Raspberry Pi. So it can be super frustrating to set these up, which is what's um, brought me to making this video today. So get rid of this, it really makes no difference for us. And then we have our um, charging cable here, which we can also use to set up this um, with our computer. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this into a computer. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing that we need to do with our gamepad controller is we need to update the firmware on our controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect this to our PC and update directly from the 8 website. So open up your browser. You're going to go in, you're going to hit, um, type in 8 then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the support tab in the top right corner of their website and we're going to look for our controller. So here they have all the Bluetooth controllers. I'm actually going to be using the SF30 Pro, which is a discontinued um, controller, but still available on Amazon and, and at different retailers. Nothing wrong with it. They've just gone with some um, different ones here. So. If we hover over, and again, it doesn't matter which of these you do, whether it's discontinued or not discontinued, you just go find your controller here. You're gonna to go to the firmware and hit download. So it only takes a couple seconds to download. You can see it's downloaded here in the corner. So I'm gonna double click here and open this up and we're gonna go looking for the application file. Here it is, it's the 8 update. Double click here. We are going to extract all the files. It says here, the application may depend on other compressed files in this folder. For the application to run properly, it is recommended that you first extract all files. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll click Extract All, Extract. And now we are going to jump into the update here. Again, this is the application. Double click. It's going to say, um, Microsoft Defender, if you're doing it on Microsoft, that is. Um, if you're doing it on a different system, it will give you probably a similar um, notice here. It just says Microsoft Defender Smart Screen prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Running this app might put your PC at risk. It's just saying that it's unrecognized. We put more info here, and we can do run anyways because we do trust 8 bit though. Now we will say, do you want to allow this app? from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device. Yes, again, we trust them. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our controller. It says first here, press and hold L1 plus R1 plus start to power on the controller. The LED at the top will blink in red. 
So the LED, if you turn this up, and again, it doesn't really matter which controller you're using, the, the process is the same. It might give you slightly different directions, but it's still going to give you a similar process. So we're going to do exactly what it says, which is press and hold L1, R1, and start. You do have to hold these for a couple seconds. It's blinking. Now we are going to plug this in to our USB port on our PC here. All right, we can hear that it did connect. Now, all right, so now we can go, it says connect PC. We did that, so click USB update button and select firmware file. So we'll hit this little button here. It says USB update. Now we're going to go to the firmware here and hit open. New firmware. So mine's actually current here. Um, if typically, if you just got this out of the box, it'll say um, current firmware, and it'll, it's usually not far off if you haven't had this sitting in your house um, without opening it for a long period of time. So it'll usually be off by one or two. So it might say 1.33 or 1.32, and the current is 1.34. So you just hit OK, and you would hit. Um, update here it'll walk you through even if I'm not actually updating anything it still walks me through this process just verifying that it's up to date and this is how long it would take regardless of whether you're actually upgrading it or not it's really a quick process so we'll hit OK for me again it didn't upgrade anything but for you it might upgrade you one or two um, firmware updates there same process, but that's all we have to do here on the computer. So we can actually X out of here. We'll jump over to our RetroPie and we will get started over there. All right, everybody, next part of this process is we are going to boot up our Raspberry Pi RetroPie system. For this next part, we're going to need either a keyboard plugged in through our USB port on our Raspberry Pi, or we're going to need a wired gamepad just in order to navigate through because we haven't yet set up our APIDO gamepad here. So First thing we're going to do is either on our gamepad that's wired in or our keyboard, we are going to select our RetroPie settings here. So we're going to hit A on either option. We're going to go down to our Bluetooth settings, which is the second option down. We'll hit A to select that. It'll load for a second. So here for configure Bluetooth devices, our first option is register and connect to Bluetooth device. So that's what we're going to select. We'll hit enter on our keyboard or A on our gamepad. Now it's going to be searching. So we're going to turn on our Apito gamepad. We can hold start. We'll see that the um, lights flash down here at the bottom. It's hard to see with this light. So now what we're going to do is we are going to hold our sync button here on the top of our gamepad. We'll hold it for three seconds. One, two, three. So you can see we've found our Bluetooth device up here. It says Apito SF30 Pro, which is our controller. We're going to select enter on our keyboard or A on our keypad or our gamepad rather. And now here it says, please choose the security mode. Try the first one, then second if that fails. So we're going to do exactly that. We'll try the first one. I'm going to hit enter. And if we get to the screen, that means it works. Sometimes you get an error message that says it was unable to connect. Then you're going to actually go back. You'll hit um, remove Bluetooth device because you actually are connected. It's just not functioning properly. You go through the same process again, but instead of selecting that first option, you're going to select the second option. So we're all set here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit cancel, which will bring us back to our um, settings page. And now we're going to go into our configuration. So again, on our wired gamepad or our keyboard, we're going to go to our main menu and we are going to go down to configure input. Oops. Are you sure you want to configure input? We'll select yes. Now we will take our APIDO Bluetooth controller here and we will hold down the A button here. You can see that it will populate across the bottom there. Now this is where we're going to configure and map our controls. So we're just going to follow the prompts here. We're going to go D-pad up. So we'll hit D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right. We'll hit start. We'll hit select. Now we'll hit A, B, X, Y. 
left shoulder, which is this one here, the first one, right shoulder, same thing on the right side, left trigger, right trigger. Now we're going to push our left thumb. So these you have to be careful. You don't want to push it and kind of pull any direction. You just want to go straight down. So we'll push straight in, left thumb, right thumb. So now left analog up, we're just going to push the left analog up, push it down, push it left, push it right. Same thing on the right side, push it up, push it down, push it left, push it right. Now for the hotkey, um, this is going to be the buttons that we select to exit games and go back to our um, main page in our collections. So if you're playing um, Tekken, for example, you're all done playing Tekken, you want to go back to your PlayStation um, game collection page, you would hit this button to exit your game and to go back to that where you could that uh, menu where you could select a different game. Or, or if you were going to shut it down, you just back out again to the main menu. So for this specific controller, I'm actually going to make it this button over here because this button has no other function. This is where, depending on what gamepad you're using, you might want to go a different route. Um, on a lot of them, you just would do select. So then when you're in, since you've already used the select button and now you want to exit a game, you'd actually hit start and select because it's not going to make two um, functions on the same button. But again, with this specific gamepad, I'm actually going to take advantage of this button. So I'm just going to click that. Again, you guys can use anything. I just recommend it being something um, probably in here or if you have these um, ex exterior um, buttons here that don't do anything in actual gameplay. I'd use those just so you're not hitting those that combination of buttons by accident. You wouldn't want to do like um, A and B or something because you there's some games where you're actually hitting those. So if you're playing a game where you you know, would be using those together and you hit that, it's actually going to take you out of your um, game, which gets pretty frustrating. So we're just going to hit this button here for this specific controller. Now for OK, we'll go ahead and hit A. And that's the um, entire process here. We're just going to actually exit and restart our, our system in order for these changes to save into our RetroPie system here. So you can go ahead and hit um, quit with a jump down to restart system here. So we hit A again, and that's going to just reboot your whole system. When you come back to it, you'll have full um, control with this gamepad. You know, even right now you have it, but it's best to restart. So you can see that everything's functioning properly here. I'm able to go through my game collections, um, go up and down. I have full range of um, all these functions. So it did take, but it's good to just do that that um, restart just to make sure everything saves properly. Um, so that that's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to go over this. And again, this um, process pretty much works for every 8-bit DO um, Bluetooth controller. It doesn't matter of the um, you know exact configurations. Obviously, those are going to vary from model to model. But the um, in terms of the Bluetooth pairing and the updating the firmware, all that, everything is going to be pretty much the same regardless of which 8-bit um, model controller you get. So that's it for today. Um, hope this video helps. If you enjoyed it and if you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, check us out online at www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.